Arizona College of Science and the researchers and staff of Biosphere 2 welcome you to the world's largest experiment in environmental science. Biosphere 2 operates as a unique collaboration between public and private sectors and researchers collaborate across disciplines working toward a common goal of understanding. This $150 million privately financed facility was built in the mid-1980s. It is now owned by the University of Arizona and is a department within the College of Science. Established in the late 19th century, the University of Arizona is a land-grant institution dedicated to building a better world. And that's what Biosphere 2 is all about. It's a test site, a patch of earth under glass that will give us new understanding of Biosphere 1, our world. I'm Carolyn Corco, and as a planetary astronomer, I have spent my entire career exploring the outer solar system. Most recently as the leader of the imaging team on the Cassini spacecraft presently in orbit around Saturn. We've learned a great deal from Cassini about the physical and chemical processes that make planets work, and we have seen some spectacular sights. Intricate and dynamic structures within the rings of Saturn. Towering fountains of icy crystals on the small moon Enceladus, and seas of liquid methane on Saturn's largest moon, Titan. But what we really gain from the examination of other worlds is perspective. A recognition that our planet is small, isolated, and vulnerable, but also precious and, at least in our solar system, completely unique. Living organisms arose on this Earth more than three billion years ago. They've survived and evolved because of a steady abundance of life's main requirements energy, organic matter, and liquid water. And we find these organisms thriving across an enormous range of environmental conditions. Take plants, for example. They can grow in a variety of soils and temperatures and climates, but by their very existence <coughs> can also influence those factors. And this remarkable facility here at Biosphere 2 allows scientists to examine and isolate thread by thread the complex web of life. The main structure is the size of three football fields. It may look like a giant greenhouse, but don't be fooled. It's no ordinary plant nursery. When you enter Biosphere 2 in the next few minutes, you'll see five different biomes or unique communities of plants living under different regional climatic conditions. Ocean, tropical rainforest, savanna, marsh, and desert. Here is a sophisticated scientific instrument that permits us to control and measure nearly every important environmental factor contributing to these ecosystems. <laughs> and we can do it here in a very big way. Because of its enormous size, Biosphere 2 can support these natural systems on a close to real world scale. Each of these plant communities is carefully maintained by regulating soil, temperatures, and the big one, the presence or absence of water. In fact, water is the main focus of Biosphere 2 research. So water and temperature have some relationship to each other in the real world. Water is the hammer on which global change will hit the earth. You know, warming temperatures, rising CO2, they all affect the way water behaves on the planet. I mean, this is a very basic problem. How much water is going to come and be delivered down to a river that we can use for societal needs. It's amazing to me that you have this big structure here that's all focused on understanding the way water interacts with living organisms on the Earth, so there's obviously a lot we still don't understand. What is it that you're really seeking to answer here about water in this facility? Well, what we'd like to do is understand or build a, a fundamental theory of water. You know, we, we know that water is this universal solvent for life. We know it makes biology happen. 
but it also gives structure to landscapes. It causes erosions. It, it, at the scale of continents, it moves energy around. So water becomes this, this key thing that stitches the biological world and the physical world together. This big environmental chamber is uniquely suited to explore complicated questions about climate change. Every one of those global change processes affect water. And so if we can understand more about the mechanisms of the behavior of water, then we have a tool to go after each of these components of global change and make better predictions about their impacts. So one of the questions we're asking here is this question of what does drought do to different types of ecosystems? So in the tropical forest, we're running the forest through these dry downs to ask how does productivity change through time? How does that change how much carbon dioxide moves in and out of that whole biome? And what does that mean for feedbacks to how climate might be changing? The LEO project is built in the former farm area of 532. This is half an acre of environmentally controlled greenhouse. There's no other facility like it in the world. We've brought together scientists from across disciplines to design these, these hill slopes, these landscapes that will allow us to really understand how water, energy, and carbon move through the landscape. One of our goals in building these large landscapes is to really understand what happens to the water after it enters the landscape as rain. Some of the water goes into the soil to be used by plants, but some of it flows down the slopes and through the soil into rivers and reservoirs for human use. If we understand better how the water on the slopes behaves, we can better predict how much water will be available for human use downstream. This is a scale of experimentation that has not been done before in the earth sciences. These landscapes are 100 feet long by 40 foot wide by two stories tall. And when you look at these, you might get the steel is this really impressive, heavy structure, but in fact, 70 to 75 percent of the weight is actually the soil. So what we can do in these artificial landscapes is monitor their total weight. And we do that by using load cells, which are scales that are embedded into the steel structure. And what that gives us is the ability to see weight increase as we turn on the rain system and a rain gets into the soil, the weight will increase. The weight will then decrease as water flows out through the downstream end, evaporates out of the soil, or is transpired through plants. So there are measurements we can make in this controlled environment that are very difficult to make in natural systems. That's what the biosphere is. We call it a scaling tool, a tool that lets us make that gap between the laboratory and the really complex real world. It's having enough space so that you get complexity evolving in time. Complexity evolving in time. That's a description that applies to Biosphere 2 itself. Trying to simulate and control Earth's complex life systems was in part a founding principle behind the initial Biosphere 2 experiment. You know, that original experiment wasn't so long ago. It started in 1991, and for us it was a big lesson in doing science on a large scale. It was really the first time that, that the life sciences had tackled a big question, and the experiment taught us how much we really didn't understand how the Earth works. The Biospherians lived here. And they worked out there in the various biomes where they conducted experiments and monitored something like 4,000 species of plants, amounting to 20 tons of living biomass. But this highly publicized experiment eventually hit a wall. What the public saw was a failed experiment, but scientists saw no such thing. So we were never deficient in nutrients. However, we were very low on calories. That's Jane Pointer is a former biospherian. To us involved in the experiment, it was an incredible success. I mean, it was an engineering triumph. I know people around Biosphere 2 all the time who really were a little unsure about the project. And once I've walked them through and they really see the incredible engineering that went into it, the science, what was involved in designing Biosphere 2, I mean, they're flabbergasted. Of what we managed to, to accomplish here. 
Scientists learned a lot from the biosphere in air, and since then they've used Biosphere 2 to conduct a variety of experiments. All these successes and failures have provided valuable insights into the processes governing natural systems. At the end of the day, Biosphere 2 has become an irreplaceable, one-of-a-kind tool for researchers eager to learn how our planet works. The size of this chamber creates its own challenges, like high utility bills, the technology, and I sure wouldn't want to be the one having to wash these windows, though the rain right now seems to be doing a pretty good job of it. But Biosphere 2 has the capacity to address very large and complicated questions in the earth sciences, and so the ultimate payoff is very big. Big science is, is the kind of science that requires interdisciplinary interactions between scientists. It requires tools that allow those different disciplines to integrate so that geologists and hydrologists and earth system scientists and, and atmospheric scientists and ecologists can all interact together. And so this facility gives us the means to do big science. The University of Arizona has always done science in a very big way, and this is no exception. And this is an opportunity for us to really do something right, to, to ask a big question and make a big impact. So this is a great opportunity. <clears throat> It's not just the scientists who get to ask questions here. Biosphere 2 is dedicated to inquiry on all levels. Biosphere 2 is a learning center for tomorrow's scientists and a conference center for today's leading researchers. And this remarkable facility offers outreach activities, special lectures, and art exhibits, all aimed at improving science literacy in the 21st century. So welcome to Biosphere 2, one of the biggest and most complex scientific instruments aimed at understanding our environment that you are likely to see anywhere ever. And as you wander into the glass, keep in mind that it's all meant to understand more about Biosphere 1, our fragile blue ocean-covered planet Earth. We live on a unique and astonishing planet, and the better we understand it, the more likely it is that we will leave it healthy and robust for future generations. <laughs>